And what? welcome, everybody. I should say welcome back if you are here for the first time. Guys, I hope you're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, night, wherever you happen to be in the universe. I'm 10410 on the right side of your screen. We are bringing you an actual reco oh, recorded, pre-recorded, shoe on head <laughs> game. This is going to be a live series game. that we're going to play. I'm with Dr. Dabson as my co-caster. What's up, brother? How you doing? Oh, doing good, doing good. And, you know, you said pre-recorded. We are actually live, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, guys. You know, we can answer. We can read chat, respond to y'all. And, uh, you know, biggest thing here is we actually have a series now. We came on earlier. We want to get your feet wet a little bit. We want to get y'all excited and then just cut, cut you off right then and there. And, you know, now we're back. Yeah, we uh, debate you as all get up. That's definitely what we did. I see people here respond if you're not AI generated. Zoofall, gotcha. Oh, this is my channel. I can say what I want. Fuck you. Got him. All right. So <laughs> I forget. I'm used to, dude, I'm used to casting on EGC. So I have to be like professional. I have to be whatever. But now I can say whatever the fuck I want because this is my channel. Um, BLB is here. Trips and Blips is here. Caker is here. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here and supporting the Devils cup we have an observer delay which is going to be just about a minute and some change but dab let's talk about our teams a little bit we got eager e gear i say e girl e every time off, dude, we off know camera where, oh we know where God. tim's mind's at he's just Whoa. all about these e-girls here today it's just you know maybe he didn't he didn't get actually i know what it is he's got the date tonight and uh yeah. all you're thinking about isn't an e-girl date tonight is that what it is yeah how you doing <laughs> <laughs> how you doing no <laughs> uh but uh, e gear excuse me uh, is comprised of Deniskia and Yellow. And what we talked about before the broadcast, before the program, is Deniskia and Yellow actually beat Jigglypuff, who is the admin for this tournament, and Baltoon, which is a professional player, beat him on a water map, Dabs. So yeah, they're, well, not, they're not anything to sniff at. You said the admin, and I'm going to say a admin if you even want to call him that here for this one. But, you know, yes, you are correct. Uh, Baltoon, actually, I hear, you know, got a little upset with Jiggly, and uh, they Jiggly doesn't know how to play water. So it doesn't really surprise me. But that still being said, if they're able to take down Baltoon on water, it uh, it's, it's something to be uh, scared about. And over on the other side, we got Mellow. That is comprised of uh, Kingslayer, Mystigan, and Risky. They are, uh, you know, playing team games quite a bit against the Devils, with the Devils, and whatnot. And we see the Civ matchup, HRE and Delhi for E-Gear, and French and Abbasid for Mellow. Yeah, I'm really interested. I mean, you know more about the 2v2 meta, but we will be getting underway. I'm going to ask you some questions as we go into Dark Age, but to make our introductions, Deniskia is spawning in the color blue as HRE. His teammate is yellow, playing as the color yellow. Thank God. Oh, if it was a different color, I would have been so mad. <laughs> playing as the Delhi Sultan on the other side, Mystican playing is the color green in the Abbasid Dynasty. Kingslayer playing as French in the color blue. Now, I know dabs for a lot of the people that you know you read enough reddit reddit posts saying delhi is this that and the other thing on a team game and they're not that good or any of that kind of perspective but in 2v2s they have they can pack a punch i feel like I mean, yeah, it's just one of those that every Civ has their kind of point in space. You won't, I won't say that there's any Civ that you just like absolutely cannot pick, but there are a few that definitely kind of lean into some more uh, strength on team games. I would say any Civ with Feudal Age Knights would be one of those Civs that I would like to have on my team. And that's where obviously King Slayer oh, is on me. the French here is yeah. what you're able to do. And it's in team He's games, so obviously maps a little bit bigger. So mobility. A little bit more important. It's hard to go, you know, help your teammate side of the base with some spears when it takes, you know, a minute and a half to get on over there. And then the guy's just going to cool. walk right to your base because you left yourself yeah. unprotected. So it's kind of one of those that, that knights can force a big reaction. And See fighting with up. your armies together is, is kind of the biggest and ultimate key. Yo. Yeah, and, you know, we're going to talk about that probably throughout the qualifiers, throughout the main event. I like to call it choreography. Having both I colors know, fighting in the same avenue really being synergistic with their teammate and i feel like for kings and mystigan when obviously you know feudal age knights are the thing but in castle age i feel like is when the power spike really happens because you want archers behind it abyssin with composite bows man you swear they have a third limb shooting those just shoot those bows and arrows because of how quickly they're going to be able to do that but in feudal age also i mean with the royal knights maybe they can contest the delhi a little bit for the sacred sites it's going to be pretty interesting to figure it out looking at kingslayer over here 
next to his base. Looks like we will be seeing some deer two minutes into the game. I see this a lot with French players, don't you? Yeah, there was a there was a time I remember when 3DB did it uh, and he would do it every single game. He would essentially just look for the first deer pack and move out immediately. But King only moving out with one single vill kind of makes me wonder a little bit more. It's almost like he wanted that mill next to his berries, but he's like, hey, I'll take the deer eventually. Um, but being forward deer might be a little bit more difficult to take those later on once Delhi get online with Gazi Raiders, as I am sure that is going to be their game plan here. You can see some of the age up starting to come through as we are getting the uh observer hovering over each side and it's actually is that a dome of the faith we see um that's a a little bit more surprising in my eyes when it comes to team games especially having hre as your partner i would have thought the delhi player kind of leans more into the uh the tower of victory maybe into some uh the infantry comp uh, and helping out in, in feudal age a bit more yeah honestly i feel like any game is better with a little bit of dome let's be honest with you however with the Dome of the Faith, I remember there was a meta long time ago, like season three, season four era, where everybody made Dome of the Faith, right? Because the scholar potential healing that it had was so busted to the point where you can't, you know, you're you're trying to kill Delhi units and you can't because of how much healing is going to happen. Maybe he's trying to go for the same kind of the same kind of thing with him, and plus. If he's going to be going a lot of Dazi, Gazi Raiders, maybe some scholars are going to help him just to make sure they don't go down too quickly. Yeah, We just saw Yellow trying to do a little bit of deer laming. Looked like he uh, had a realization that maybe he needed to bring some sheep home and uh, <laughs> kind of getting himself distracted a little bit. Only killed one of those deer before bringing it back. And eh, maybe doesn't need the sheep, but uh, just kind of making the drop off and, and circling back around for vision. But Feudal Age is coming through. This is really when the action starts. This is really when we're going to start to see, you know, maybe some sort of snowball, you know, some players be greedy, some players be maybe a little bit more aggressive. And Mystigan went up with the military wing, allowing him to get a foot on the ground early with the free units. And I don't see him moving out onto the stone yet. Yeah, I'm not seeing another town center out of him either. You can see House Horse is looking over that first stone, that second stone is on the south side. You're still not seeing that on the mini map as well but i like what mystigan is doing with those military wing free units any value that you get out of those units is worth its weight in gold because you didn't pay anything for these right you went for the landmark so if you're able to disrupt a gold mine you're able to disrupt a little bit of what delhi's doing because they just got up to feudal age it takes a minute or two to kind of get their feet out from under them get their production buildings get the things they want to do so having these units just floating around making it annoying for the other players is exactly what mystigan wants to do and what he's about to do Daniskia trying to wall not gonna get up there dabs a little bit of a slow reaction as well that is one vill for sure going down he has his chapel out a little bit further out on the wood line not saying that it can be you know taken down or anything but if mystigan circles around and just kind of postures his archers on the outside it will make it very difficult for Daniskia to uh to gather from that inspired wood line yeah and i feel like you can tell from this awkward chapel a little bit on the north side maybe he was you know he wants to replace a lumber camp or make sure he doesn't have to make a lumber camp this idle time is just so terrible. And now King Slayer coming up around the back end. We're seeing the first little helping of our choreography. We have a knight there, Royal Knight, going to be able to help out a little bit. If there's men at arms that come out, you know, if there's other archers that come out, maybe it's a good idea to have that knight around the other side. And you know what's great about this too, Dabs, with Mystigan is King Slayer is able to go out and try to get some of those outside food resources that French wants to do while just keeping your opponent under duress. Yep. Quick reaction by Yellow. This is kind of what we were talking about. The Knights are just going to bounce between base, uh, both bases. And that's where we saw Daniskia forced to react with his own archers, own spears. We got raids coming in on every side. But all of King's reinforcements headed right in between Daniska and Yellow. That is going to be the key focus here. If they're able to just split the two teammates, makes this fight a lot easier for themselves. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I think you kind of hit the nail on what the French is so yes. good at in team games, whether two or two all the way up to four or four. It's just the mobility of those units, right? You're able to, just like you said, you're able to bounce back from base to base, pick off a villager or two, and you're so worried about making sure your villagers don't go down. All of a sudden, your teammates panicking and all that kind of stuff. So now red and green are starting to come together. Mr. Ginn and King Slayer are. It's looking like a Christmas tree over here, and I think they're kind of splitting 
yellow and Daniskia apart, so they can't actually get together. I really like this play a lot. Yeah, and the Ghazi Raider number, it's starting to climb up a little bit, but they're sitting under your town center, and that never feels good with mobile units when you're not really doing anything with them. You're not taking any shots. You're not able to get any damage at all, and you can see now Mystigan and King, they put a little bit of damage on the HRE, caused some idle time. Now they're circling around to the Delhi, just constantly back and forth, just doing as much damage as possible. And the nicest part of this whole thing, nothing is going on on their side of the map. No damage, their ecos are untouched, and oh my god, we have a market in the corner. We're gonna... <laughs> We're going to see a little bit of some trade action going on, which we haven't seen any scouting for a while coming from the yellow and blue side of E-Gear. So um, this trade is going to be easy to pay off here. Yeah, he put that out. Like, we saw the market there, and obviously you were looking at yellow's field of vision, and he doesn't see it because of the lack of scouting because they're so focused in their own base. But, you know, when you're Kingslayer and you put that market down, I'm thinking, well, I mean, why not? You technically have 90% of this map right now. You're keeping a Delhi player into their base, which means you're not hearing any ding dongs of sacred sites in the few late, which is fantastic. And it looks like just with those knights, and you see they're gonna try to get a charge on some of those Ghazi Raiders, they might be able to take that fight if they choose to back up. Is they have horsemen, which are knights, they have spear, they have archers. They went for it's basically a one-one-one composition, but between two players. Yep, the one thing I would say that King needs to worry about is if that army of Mystigan is a little bit further away, those Ghazis will do a decent bit of damage to the knights with the extra a little bit of uh, base damage. They are quite tanky themselves, and if Yellow has the APM for it, he can pull back the lower health ones and have his uh, own bit of chivalry himself with his scholars healing uh, up under the base. And we know these are good players, right, Cap? So he'll be able to do that, I feel like, if you give him the opportunity. But there's a decent amount of Spearmen that might be able to take the damage to the Ghazi Raider. I feel like if they if they both come in unison, obviously they'll take down the Raiders, but then the blue over on the western side which would prove to be difficult. And now it looks like yellow and blue kind of got their feet out from under him. Outpost build gets canceled, and all of a sudden, I think they might be able to breathe. Yeah, it looks like Daniskia and, and Yellow, they just played it chill, just waited patient, patient until they had this mass. And one thing I'll say is, you know, the other side's investing it into some eco a little bit further. So this might just be a good timing to take the fight. Doesn't look like there's too many spears here left. And the Ghazi Raider mass is in the doubles. Yeah, I'll tell you what, the HRE archers did a really good job of targeting all of those spearmen. And I think if I'm looking on the map, I might see maybe six. If I'm counting, we don't have the, we don't, we're not spoiled now with the 1v1 kind of caster overlay, so we got to do a little bit of counting. But now HRE, Delhi, trying to push the offensive, maybe get a sacred site or two. That one on the northeastern side is getting captured at the same time this battle is going on, and we're gonna see if there's enough knights here to hold. But HRE spearmen are gonna be coming into that front line. I think this is bad for red and green. Yeah, Spears were a little bit out of position at the start, but King decided to continue on with the fight, left some of those low health knights in there, and Yellow and Daniskia are clearing up this mass that Mystigan and Kingslayer moved forward with. It was going well for a while, they were splitting the bases for a while, but all of a sudden, they allowed the two heads to conjoin as one. Yeah, now we're kind of dealing with the... Uh... We're dealing with more of a Cerebus at this point because of how many heads there are. I think just because of the HRE getting their feet out from under them, they have the Aka Chapel. There's probably some farms around that chapel as well. The wood line going to put the Aka Chapel in the wood line helped them make as many archers to try to take down the spears. And now you're dealing with this, right? You're dealing with this head of Ghazi Raiders, archers, there's a couple spearmen left over. If you're Kingslayer and Mystigan, you gotta, you gotta make some units. You gotta make it fast. Yeah, and this is where, you know, we talked about this forward deer way earlier on. It's like now King, he can't take those deer. Fortunately, he grabbed the majority of them early, and I, I think I just saw Wheelbarrow not having uh, been clicked yet from Kingslayer, which as the French, you want to get those re um, get those units or get those eco techs in early as they are quite, quite cheap for yourself. That's so rough, right? I mean, not only is the wheelbarrow cheaper, but like for French, you're able to pop out villagers every 17 seconds instead of 20. So the wheelbarrow and all of those economic technologies, really, it feels like they're exponentially better playing as the French. So not having them is a big deal. We're going to see our first in game number one. We're going to see our first Ram Ranch here. And it's looking like a second Ram is going to be coming out. Daniskia building it. I don't know, if you're if you're missing it, they're ramming down your base like this, especially as the Abyssin Dynasty. You're gonna try to back up as much as you can, but you can't pack up too much or you're in the next map over. 
Yeah, I mean, you you need as many units out as possible, and it just really doesn't feel like there's this mass here at all. Deniska has done a great job of, of climbing his mass up, and marching drills able to uh, be researched from, well, it is automatically researched from the very beginning, so he has a, a little bit of extra boost with his infantry as far as that movement speed goes, and oh my, Ram Ranch, it's not one, not two, not three, but four Rams, and we are about to see the base of Mist again just start to disappear here. Gazi's going to be able to roam and do some raiding as well. Yeah, I think we're going to see a little bit of a disintegration, and I feel like HRE, just for how many units they have, they might be able to take down both. And I think Yellow sees that too because he's got the fastest units out here, right? So he's going to be able to do some raiding, kind of make the armies of both red and green kind of not be in the front line, not being where they're supposed to be. So Rams have free reign onto that production. Gazi get a little bit of a brace from those spearmen from Michigan, but looking at them, there's just there's just not enough in here. Yeah, the Archer Mass is just nowhere to be found from Mist again. So easy to be cleaned up and wasn't able to remass from the beginning. Kingslayer, yeah, he's got those Knights, but they're taking extra damage from those Gazis. Deniska Spears closing in the gap, and all of a sudden that Knight number is not looking too healthy. And all during this, Mistigan's base is getting demolished. Yeah, and those rams, I mean, usually you're thinking, well, you can't leave a ram uncontested, or you can't leave a ram just sitting by itself, but just because there's no army here for Mystic or King Slayer, those rams could do whatever the hell they want. And that's exactly what they're going to do. You know, that House of Wisdom is even under threat. The main town center is. It looks like the Knights of King Slayer, though, are going to be able to take down some of those rams, but there's so oh, much production building that went that's down. That's vlogging. Yeah, just Mistigan says uh, as he leads the armies of Deniska uh, from the other side, right to his berries, right to the trade, realized there was no stabilization there. There was no getting back out. And we see Egear taking game number one. Yeah, in a, honestly, in a rather convincing fashion. I mean, besides the first, I want to say, you know, four or five minutes. I mean, obviously, yeah, the French are going to get up a little bit quicker. You know, the what's it called? The uh, HRE is going to take some time to get under. So, you know, obviously the French are going to have a couple nights or, you know, whatever to try to take down one or two villagers. But all of a sudden, I feel like as soon as it hit like that eight or nine minute part, everything just flipped on its head. And then as soon as Delhi gets a couple of those sacred sites, phew, you don't have a shot in hell at that point. Yeah, the Mellow team did a really good job of splitting E-Gear early on. They were really kind of making the fights getting taken, but there wasn't a ton of damage getting done. The, we saw Deniska lose maybe one, two villagers early on with the um, chapel over on the wood line. But after he was able to fully finish the wall, after he was able to kind of get that setup done, then it was just massing units until they felt comfortable enough to take the fight. And obviously we saw it. They they took that fight at a great timing, pushed Mellow back and actually snowballed it so far that Mellow had no ability to hold after it. And it's so like it's so nice to do as Delhi, you know, from from somebody who plays Delhi at a rather consistent amount, just being able to be in feudal age, being able to only have to worry about two resources, right? Because gold, I mean, they're gonna get from their sacred sites if they want to go to castle even if they choose to or they can stick in feudal but just their ability to make units and efficiently produce those units everything from delhi just works so so well together and you saw that just because of how many gauzy raiders yellow had he had so many gauzy raiders to the point where in that first uh that first battle that you were talking about dabs he was able to just bypass the night line entirely and just circle around the archers from Mistigan. So really good play by him, really good play by the Delhi player. Game number two, however, between Deniskia and Mellow King Slayer. Now, guys, this is going to be, because it's a best of three, it's going to be a match point for E. I'm going to keep saying E girl. I don't give a shit. Um, <laughs> between, I'm so sorry for those of you, like you're pretty, you, you look good, game one. You know, it's not, it, it's not an insult, I promise. It's just, it's not in my vernacular. And, Mello on the other side is going to have to lick their wounds for a game two to hopefully get a game three. But Dabs, I'm seeing the matchups on the screen. E Gear huh, mm. is going with <laughs> English and French. Mello going with China and HRE. What do you think about it? Yeah, it, it almost flips game number one completely upside down. Early game number one, we saw Mello be the aggressors. Eager had to hold, Eager had to kind of stabilize, get comfortable, and then break out of the shell. Well, 
based off of these civilizations, I think Egear wants to be the the aggressor here. They saw how Mellow kind of reacted. They saw how maybe they overreacted or, or didn't react enough over on their side. And they said, all right, French, English, a classic combination of duos. I remember this was before all the, the expansion civilizations came out. This was the combo that was like, almost impossible to stop if you go up against a, uh, a team that has practiced enough on it it's still somewhat like that uh, as but i will say that a few of the new civilizations make it a little bit easier to hold but we're not talking about new civilizations here we're talking about all the og old ones yeah that's right four of the first eight i want to say are going to be here and you're exactly right with french and english because i mean like it just makes sense on paper and i think even like when this game first came out and I think people were playing uh, team games or trying to coordinate with their buddies and stuff like that. I mean, you have the best archers in Feudal Age. You have the best cavalry units in Feudal Age. Obviously, you're going to throw them together, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, that kind of it, it's kind of a no-brainer. But China, on the other side, with HRE, might prove to be a little bit difficult. I mean, because those are civilizations that they usually pay off later. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of one of those where sometimes where you'll see the the feudally aggressive side have their downfall as they focus too much on one and the other person goes untouched and all of a sudden you have HRE with three relics and has a minute arm span going up against feudal age units and it's like, well, you kind of didn't uh, you didn't really balance out your pressure enough. Um, but also you can see this get to the point where there's so many knights, there's so many longbows, it doesn't matter what the other side can even end up doing. And you talked about knights and longbows. It doesn't even have to be straight up rushed if you don't do that. We could see English get the Dark Age aggression, go Dark Age men at arms, get either one of these civs kind of on the back foot, pressure HRE's gold, and then following up with a knight right when feudal age happens you can do the super super quick age up and it's so hard to react to the men at arms followed up with the knight as well. And, you know, too, like, let, let's not forget for some of the new changes that are out now. Some of the some of the civilizations got tinkered with. Some of the oldest civilizations got tinkered with, English included. You know, I would be amazed if I saw something different from the Abbey of Kings. But one of the things that is leading into my nightmares over the past two weeks is the fact that Abbey of Kings exists. <laughs> and you can get that king for free very quickly. You can you know, coordinate with maybe in this 2v2 setting, you can coordinate with French knights and do something like that. So I think there's, I, I think, I think there's a decent amount of possibilities between both of them. Although, you know, for China and, you know, my disdain for the Chinese civilization dabs, you've known me for a long time <laughs> at this point. Uh, Zugnu are something that exist and they are one of those units I get against French Royal Knights might not be the best idea, but my God, can they gobble everything else up? Yeah, once you get a big mass, they really do clear out everything, but that's where I immediately follow up with, you could say the same about English. English Longbows counteract the mm -hmm. Jugs very, very uh, well um, with the extra range that they can have. Looks like we're having a, a little bit of some technical difficulties with some of the players pc so you just get to hang out with us for a little bit longer we get to just throw our our bs uh you know random guesses on how the next match is going to play i mean i can keep throwing strategies on out there and, and just keep <laughs> changing up your ability it's like you know what he tim said the king it's like well english they just go straight fast castle after that they don't make a single unit other than the king let french get the pressure on and then guess what hre They've taken pressure from French. They had to react. They took pressure from the king. And English, they're laughing because they're Castle Age, taking all the relics on the map. They go castle with an extra town center. And then, boom, English eco is is out through the roof. We got double, triple the eco on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, I like we're, we're, essentially, we're essentially having a brainstorm session in terms of what all of these civilizations are going to do. And I also... I also like how you censored yourself by saying BS because you probably now nowadays <laughs> Dabston pretty much only casts on EGC anymore. So we got to be, you know, we got to be best foot forward. He wore a collared shirt like you he know. usually does when he's on EGC. Just just a friendly reminder, Dabs, you can say fuck all 
on this yeah channel. i mean i know like, i can I, it's just you know sometimes you just get used to used to the way you speak and then you know all of a sudden <laughs> i start cussing on here and then i start slipping on uh, on egc and that's the last <laughs> thing you want to which i will say there's there's some people who it seems are allowed to to say a little bit more things but i'm i'm not going to be able to to put myself in that bucket yet yeah and i mean i <laughs> Why, why put yourself in hot water when you have room temp right next to you? You know what I mean? Uh, people, uh, chat are Jackal asking where my collared shirt is. It's in my fucking closet, brother. Um, and I don't you know, even know I if I have any. Scrubs, Tim. I think you should wear your scrubs next time. Yeah. I'll just... <laughs> yeah. We're working. We're working here. All right. We're working here. Scrubs are going on. Badges going on. I'm ready. We're going to, I'll basically be the medic for both of these games at the same time, but for this pivotal game number two, I mean, we could kind of talk about what else that this particular, I mean, for these qualifiers, what are they going to do? Like, what, what is the end result for them? Obviously, if you win for this best of three, you're going to be able to go to the main event, which is next week, right? So we have a series that are going on, obviously, today. More, or I should say, less than we particularly might have wanted. But tomorrow... There's going to be plenty, plenty, plenty of action. A lot of the games that were yesterday or were supposed to be today ended up getting rescheduled until tomorrow. So we're going to have a lot of games tomorrow, probably a super, super long uh, cast. And I hope you all stick around, obviously, for tomorrow and the main event, which is next week. Uh, personally, I want to thank House Taurus for giving me the opportunity mm -hmm. to put this on my channel and for putting up the prize pool for this. Most of this is on his birthday, too. It is. It's House Source's birthday. Everybody could say birthday to him. He's turning uh 16. Just say birthday, not happy birthday. Just just birthday. Yeah. He's <laughs> he's going after this, he's going to get his driver's license. And my God, we are just so proud of him. We're so proud of him. Well, he has to pass the test still. And it you know, we we've been studying with him for a while. We've been testing him and, and we won't tell you how the practice tests have gone so far, but we got about a 50-50 chance here. Yeah, he's thrown more curveballs than a junk pitcher when it comes to driving. I don't know if he's going to handle those left and right turns, but good. Best of luck for him. Best of luck for him. He's doing a good job of piloting the stream so far. He's he's the one who's doing the observing in the background. So obviously, and give a big thank you to him. And we're waiting. I, it looks like Deniskia and Yellow are in the lobby. I think there was some kind of crashing that was happening. So hopefully, game two will be able to get to you as soon as humanly possible because i personally am waiting at the edge of my seat for how this one's going to close out i know for the the for the mellow guys dabs and these are people that honestly these are people that we know i know risky i know king slayer i've played other games with them before so i'd like I'd, I'd like them to put up a fight here we're gonna see a you know we can see a really good game three have us on our edge of our seats kind of thing yeah, I like how you assumed it was crashing because like it, it most most 90 percent, 99 percent chance it is probably the crashing. But I believe this one was actually King's PC and, and not actually some crashing, believe it or not here. But, you know, <laughs> knock on wood here for uh, for going forward. You mentioned it. They are in lobby. Does seem like King has gotten his stuff up and running. And, uh, you know, that's where we will at least have one exciting game here left today. There could be uh there could be some some further games as uh like you said, if if Melo's able to to get the dub here, but exciting series tomorrow and obviously the main event coming next week. We had Beastie and Core, I believe, were the um team that got the invite into the main event, but there's some stronger, strong, stronger, same level teams out there, you know, with the Wham and Puppy. You got some of the OG Banner Boys with Jeff, Murray, and Nug. Uh, you got the real team with Vertex and Starflark. A lot of Conk 3 gamers out in the mix here. And so will be a very, very fun tournament to continue to kind of keep up with here. Yeah, and I mean, that's what happens with a tournament, man, especially <clears throat> when you don't have... In this, in, in this particular weekend and next weekend, you might not necessarily have some of the S-tier tournaments that are going on right now. I mean, these players, they want to cut of the pie, man. I mean, first place is nothing to sniff at. It's over 200 bucks, you know? So a lot of these players looking to get out there. And, you know, I will say, too, there's a lot of players in this tournament that specifically play team games. We don't see them in 1v1 tournaments. We don't see them in that particular you know, situation. So they might be able to try to get their name out there. Maybe they have a clan they want to show off. You know, maybe they have 
a potential to take down a lot of these really high echelon 1v1 players because we kind of talked about this off camera just a little bit before the stream started. A lot of 1v1 players, they're excellent in a 1v1 situation. They know how to play the game, especially, I mean, specifically against one opponent or one opposing civilization. You add more variables into the mix, and you know this from being both a team game player and a 1v1 player. You have to play differently in a 2v2 situation in order to win games. Yeah, one of the biggest things that I laugh about is, is you have to rely on a teammate. It's not mm -hmm. just you. You have, and it, it's one that you know. I'll, I've been. I've watched Puppy and Wham. I've watched Jiggly and Hal's play. I've watched all over the board of of people who have you know the the team camaraderie. They played a bunch of games together, or you know some of the people who have just now played their first team game together. They just randomly got paired up for the tournament, and you can really see and tell the people who can react. I, I, you know, it's like one of those that's like, hey, I got two on me. It's like, well. Does that mean you need help? Does that mean you need, I should go raid their base? You know, yeah. you can't sit here and talk about that, you know, that one little saying for an extra minute and a half during the game. You need to immediately be able to know, be able to react on a, at a moment's notice there. So that is really where you have that kind of long-term gameplay ability that, that definitely leans into your favor when it comes to team games. Oh, absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> even just having that, number exactly how you said if it's somebody who comes in with the first time it's almost like honestly dabs it's almost like with casters <laughs> you know because like the first the I, I remember the first time casting well actually the first time casting with you was one of the first times i casted ever so you got to work each other out a little bit you gotta figure it out you gotta get the you gotta get you gotta get a vibe check you know especially when when you're playing team games with team game players you could have two players that like to play knight civilizations and have macro figured out for knights and not really anything else but then once one player has to do something different right and they just don't necessarily jive it's not that they're both not good players it's just they just don't jive together right are, so, are you explaining jiggly you said knight knight player doesn't know how to do anything different everything it just keeps narrowing to, to jigglies but i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you know i mean he does he does knights and you know and then after when he does when he does do that, okay, um, he does more knights usually. And then he sees spears and crossbows and camels, and more knights is what he right. And then we see the it, yeah. Then we see the knights come out. Yeah. Then we see the knights come out for sure. Uh, but <laughs> we give him shit. But uh, Jiggly is probably one of the best. I would say French and Jean Dark players that I have the opportunity of watching he does have his own channel if you wish to follow that as well and i see gokowski in chat saying sometimes he does feudal horsemen that is a play i saw um, actually i did see him make two when he was off gold for like seven or eight minutes so God, you think you fucking know a guy you know you think you know a guy that he just what? starts pumping out horsemen but now game number two i think gentlemen. We're underway. finally past here. We're we're past the point of you know all this BSing around, bullshitting around, if that's what you want to say here. And uh, <laughs> now we are into game number two. We have Deniska and Yellow versus Mystigan and King. And uh, let's check in on some of these spawns here. Yeah, and I think one of the one of the big ones that you really got to pay attention to, I feel like, is the HRE spawn. You know, where yeah. are you gonna put that Aka Chapel? Where are you gonna? Oh my start to make some of these units and it looks like as house horse is hovering over the hre extraordinaire it looks like we're seeing some places on the western side where that golden wood line is maybe on the north side where he gets some of that wood you will be able to get sheep you will be able to get some berries if you're looking for a fast castle or if you want to put it on a wood line over there on the western side but fast castle i'm not really thinking that's going to happen as house horse is observing and zooming in on that that is a feudal age hre barracks we're seeing some spearmen and he's going to go dent some people yeah i'm kind of surprised by this you could actually see he had a mining camp that he was starting canceled it and decided to go with some dark age spearmen i'm i guess your game plan here is to send those spears on over to the french but i just feel like this is one of those things that if they've seen this before it's super easy to react about the bases are so so close if if uh Deniska really wanted he could just send three villagers over to yellow's gold oh don't tell me okay 
He could send three villagers over to Yellow's gold and literally just use the English short bows to push the, the first spears away. And it, it's literally, it wouldn't even matter. And the gold's so close that he could actually, it might be the same distance as his gold. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too. <laughs> I mean, and what's nice, I mean, as a team game, you know, when you have your other a player, your teammate on the other side, you're exactly right. You can use those short bows, then you can just mine from the same gold. You don't have to take all of that idle time to walk all the way back. But these spearmen, I, yeah. I, I, I don't know how your opinion is, Dabs, but it feels like when you're trying to get so aggressive in Dark Age, in a 2v2 or even higher, 3v3, 4v4 situation, you you end up covering, or it takes a lot of time for you to cover the part of the map. Look at this. By the time the spearman ends up getting there, we're at 2 minutes and 20 seconds. I would probably put a decent amount of money that yellow already has the gold to age. He probably does, but if he doesn't have the gold to follow that age up with the knight, then it doesn't matter as much. The marching drills does help that spear come across a little bit faster. It looks like yellow, he wants that gold at least for one knight. He didn't react fast enough. One vil. Oh, King. Almost able to pick up that vil. There's still only three vils here, and, and yellow decides to just go ahead and age up and still just continue to gather gold. Yeah, that one villager, I think he's got a decent amount of blood in that gold sack from how many times he got stabbed over there. I'm surprised Daniska isn't helping. It looks like another one might be going down. That villager is at eight health and will be trying to micro in a particular fashion. I really like how the spearmen, especially for HRE, and you can see it uh, a little bit bigger in the Order of the Dragon because their spearmen are bigger. They kind of do like a fadeaway poke, you know, trying to save their lives. They're able to kind of charge in, get that first one, and then back all the way up. More oh, of those don't jump in, don't dive down oh. oh. And the sad part there, oh, and it's both. <laughs> <laughs> The gold's so close. We were 100% correct. The gold was so close that he just walked right on over into the English town center. And now we're at the point where that early spearman play has essentially been nullified. Yellow is actually still not back onto the gold yet, but I think he's just now sending the bills back and he's like, oh, that's it. All right, great. Let me, uh, let me go ahead and be able to queue up knights immediately again. Maybe delays up a wheelbarrow play. And you know, you saw that. You saw those two spearmen go down. No villagers went down, so good micro from yellow. Kingslayer is probably building this Aachen Chapel, as you can see him building it right now, just thinking, what the fuck did I do that for? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and that's what happens in Dark Age. And that's what that's the gamble that you take. You might be able to get one or two villagers. You might be able to create a lot of idle time. But the one thing that makes Dark Age aggression as good as it is, is it has to delay your opponent more it delays your, more than it delays yourself. And I don't feel like King had that ability. No, it, it definitely did not feel the greatest play there. We, you saw him just uh, try to kind of pull over, start rushing down his landmark, uh, getting that chapel finished on up. Missed again, though. He's been the one that uh, kind of should have this very, very clean early build order. I believe he's got that, you know, kind of five minute... Um, Song Dynasty timing coming in with rushing down the Barbican forward. And that Barbican is going to provide a good amount of safety for his side. He's got berries behind it. He's got deer not too far away. But they got worries to deal with as longbows are already heading across. Yeah, and that's going to be difficult. I mean, the Barbican is going to go up, which is great. It's going to give him that vision to be able to see where those bye bye longbows are coming out. Yeah, that one's gone. That first one is definitely gone. But you got to be thinking about now, if you're Daniskia, you got to be thinking, well, what's my plan of attack now? What's my route of attack? The way he was sending those longbows initially probably weren't a good idea because of the Barbican right there. But a lot of that food source that Mystigan has is in front of the Barbican. The longbowman range is so long where, yeah, you can go into Michigan's base, you know, just because there's not a barbican in his base means he doesn't have that defensive powerhouse there. But also, you can sit in front of the Look at the pack. sheep. The sheep for King. He just dropped two off. He's like, out. Oh, that's miserable as the HRE. He can start dropping farms uh, as the HRE around the chapel, but never feels good. He can move on over to the berries, but it's just not going to be inspired. So really, really kind of this lack of, uh, of food for the HRE player. But I will say the first night just now came across, I believe uh, maybe takes a vill out on the wall and potentially a second. But that first night coming across at six minutes, very, very delayed.
Yeah, it was. It was more delayed than I thought it was going to be, to be honest with you. At least with that little bit of time, Kingslayer was able to get a barracks out, get a couple spearmen, make sure he's kind of protected as much as possible. That Longbowman from Daniska is having himself a field day. He's, ha he's just having target practice over here. This is one of those that, like, if I'm that long, he's just laughing at this point. He's like, look at these idiots. They can't do anything. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, it's four. gone. <laughs> he's not four. I, didn't, I don't know. Yeah, he, he barely just got into that range, though. And that one long bow proved to be a massive, massive headache. But it didn't seem like there was any, you know, more reinforcements that had across other than those two initial longbows. And walls have now been completed for King on the western side. Looks like Mistigan's going to get some walls there on the front. And really, really solid if you are the booming Civ, kind of looking at the, the map spawn now, having a lot of resources behind these walls and a lot of protection. But... Deniskia is coming, not only with a few longbows, but with villagers to expand that network. Yeah, I mean, that's the number one thing. If you're a lower elo player and you're learning how to play English for the first time, always take fights under an English outpost. Getting that network is so, so crucial. I'm seeing from Miskin, it looks like some normal Chinese archers. I haven't seen some of those in a long time. And men at arms coming out for Kingslayer, which will be able to shield, you know, a decent amount of arrow volleys, but the longbowmen, because of their health is so much, villager going down from Mistigan, yellow, just continuing to be the aggressor, trying to get some villager kills because it feels like for them being the aggressive player, they're kind of on a time frame. They can't let the HRE and the Chinese pay off or we're going to see a game three pretty quick. Yeah, exactly that. The outpost, though, that's coming forward on the wood line is going to make it very difficult for Mistigan to be able to start gathering wood from this location. Can't really go back to his home wood line either as there's longbow station there as well. So really kind of collapsing this map. And look at Yellow. Now with the walls, he says, all right, I'll come help you, Mistigan, which this is kind of at the point that King needs to start sending all of his spears over to the side to help Mistigan as well. Knights diving behind the walls. Barbican, he's saying, all right, eight villagers in the Barbican, not enough to take down some of my knights and prove to be exactly true. Gets a villager or two and runs on out of there. Some spears falling as well. Did you take a look at just based on these campfires that we're seeing right now. Yes, campfires actually exist in the game. I can't believe it either. But the Barbican used its hand cannon slit to actually shoot down one of the campfires over on the eastern side. Campfires do have a health of one, and they could be able to be taken down. Now, it looks like Yellow on the eastern side going to be able to coordinate very well with Deniskia. Going to make sure that you have some longbowmen behind those royal knights. And look at that outpost, Dabs. That outpost is an in-your-face outpost. Yeah, I mean, if I'm missed again, I need to go over to Kingslayer's side of the map. I need to grab his wood line because I cannot grab any of my main wood line. Look at him. He's still struggling. He's trying to circle around the backside. He's trying to complete some walls real quick, but there's knights already waiting there. And Yellow, he says, all right, let's dive the base as well. There is a village here to secure a little bit more of uh, some spots, but there's 10 villagers inside, and I see multiple dead bodies. I see an IO on the ground, and Yellow and Deniskia are taking it to the other side. But King, he's been untouched for a while. He's going up. We just saw him. He is finishing his castle age as we speak. Here comes the Burgrave. Yeah, you know, the Burgrave, it's probably more like an oh shit button, right? Okay. You're very behind. Speaking of but... the oh shit button, press it, press it now. Oh shit, <laughs> oh shit. No, he's not reacting. Uh, what are you going to be making from the Burgrave if you don't have food? That's exactly the point I was going to make. Dabs, I mean, we saw him run out of sheep a little bit ago. That Burgrave Palace, now is just a fancy building. It's not going to do shit. A lot of those villagers end up going down, be fertilizer. Mistigan's like, I've had quite enough of this game. And it looks like Kingslayer will be following suit very quickly. As soon as that Burgrave went up, it gets destroyed. In the blink of an eye, 2-0 for E-Gear, the Niskia and yellow they're going to be moving on to the main event we mentioned that you know e gear was able to take down the ball tune jiggly duo which is not a team that you want to be messing with i've seen uh i've seen them take down quite a few players themselves and clearly deniskia and yellow came to fruition here with this series they came today ready to play had a game plan and executed it pretty successfully here yeah i mean it was kind of like what we talked about previously for 
the French and English. They were being the aggressor. So they had a time frame. They had to take them down. They were able to do it pretty successfully. Pretty convincing, I might say. 2-0 for Eager. And uh, I'm going to need uh, some input from the admins. I'm not sure based on the Discord channel. But um, is there going to be uh, another series? I don't think uh, Shiki and Neptune and Happy Cat showed up as it's 3 a.m. where they are from. So okay. I believe there is not. And they got DQ'd. So that is most likely it for today. <laughs> but again, <laughs> just getting your feet wet for some awesome series that we have tomorrow. Keep in mind, we did have two series today that got pushed to tomorrow. So yes, that is the reason why there was such limited uh, limited exposure here to the tourney is because there's going to be a lot of exposure to the tourney tomorrow. A lot of games, a lot of series, and a lot of excitement for sure. Yeah, I mean, for this first series, you're kind of, you guys are just getting a little bit of an appetizer of what to expect for the going weekends on this channel for the past for the, this weekend and next weekend don't forget next weekend main event tomorrow a lot of qualifiers a lot of these team game players it might be their first time to get into a big tournament and so it, we got the big pro players coming tomorrow too as beastie and core were the only ones to uh to get the qualifier spot so we got the the 3d squad and the the puppy and wham canadian bros yeah yeah big names are going to be heading to you guys tomorrow. So obviously, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, I love you all. A special big shout out to House Horse for being the main admin and the observer for today. And also, a big thank you to Dr. Dabs and my co-caster. It is always fun to cast with you, my friend. Always good to be on here. It's always fun watching uh, watching your stream from the sidelines here in the, the, the previous weeks. And, uh, you know, we will be back tomorrow. So make sure everyone shows up. And not only tomorrow, next week as well. Yep. Sending you guys over to Rising Empires for now. This is Low Elo Legends. Give them some love. Give them some follows. We'll see you.